Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This video's topic will be on the elements of weather and weather instruments. Before I begin, please remember to make that thumbs up blue, share and subscribe. Now let's get into it. There are several weather elements. Some main elements include wind, temperature, pressure, humidity, clouds and precipitation. Now let's define these terms. The temperature of the atmosphere is a measure of its hotness or coldness. Simply put, how hot or cold the atmosphere is. Winds. A wind is simply the flow of a huge amount of air, usually from a high pressure area to a low pressure area. Atmospheric pressure is just as the name suggests, the atmosphere is pressure. It is a pressure exerted by the weight, weight of the atmosphere. Sorry. Humidity. It is the amount of moisture in the air, water exists in the air in gaseous form called water vapor. So simply put, humidity is the amount of water vapor that is present in the air. Clouds. Clouds are the collection of water droplets, ice crystals, or mixtures of both. So those are definitions for weather elements. Now, let's get into our weather instruments. We collect our meteorological data by using weather instruments. Weather conditions are measured by the standard weather instruments as seen on this slide. So on the slide we see two ther thermometers and we see one that is extremely hot and one that is freezing cold. This is in my term my best slide. I love this slide. I love how it looks. Yes, I'm, I'm going to finish gloating now. Alright, so on to winds and the weather instruments for winds. So winds are divided into two categories, speed and direction. Wind speeds are measured using an anemometer. So let's get a description of an anemometer. Maybe we have seen one before and we were not aware that it was one. So it has three or four wind-driven cups, which is mounted on a vertical, that's from north to south, axis. Its rate of rotation varies based on the speed of the wind. And this is how it measures wind speed. We should have an idea of a wind vane. It is a pointer which swings in the direction of the wind and that's basically how it works. So it has the cardinal points and wherever the pointer swings, this is where the wind is blowing or the direction of the wind. So we have a did you know here, it says did you know wind can provide energy through the use of wind turbines, wind turbines, this is known as wind energy. So the did you knows are not really related to the elements. Um, of weather or basically how the instrument is used but it's just a fun fact all right and the wind blowing can be used as wind energy which is a natural form of energy so on to the next all right now atmospheric pressure an aneroid barometer is used to measure atmospheric pressure this is a flexible metal vacuum box that expands or contracts with changes in pressure a mercury barometer can also be used to measure atmospheric pressure. Alright, so on the screen, we see an image of an aneroid barometer and a mercury barometer. So we see the differences in both and how they fit our description. And we also have a fun fact here. It says on weather maps, air pressure is shown with lines called isobars. These lines, these lines join places of equal pressure together. And if we go further into maps and hurricanes and storms, we'll see the use of isobar, the isobars and how they are used on maps. Now on to the famous temperature. The instrument used to measure the temperature of your body or even the temperature of your food is the same used to measure the temperature of the atmosphere. Yes, a thermometer. The most common type was a glass tube in which the height of a column of mercury or alcohol varies with changes in temperature. Electronic thermometers are always are also sorry, used to measure temperature and are known as thermistors or thermocouples. So if we look to the right of our slide, we see the common thermometer that is usually used and also we see an electronic thermometer which is known as a thermistor. And we see the differences in both and how they look and but they still have the same purpose to tell the temperature of our atmosphere which is good one that may not be common to many people is humidity humidity data including relative humidity vapor pressure and dew point is secured with the use of various types of instruments and before I go further let me just highlight a couple terms 
So relative humidity is the ratio of the amount of water vapor actually present in the air to the greatest amount of water vapor that is possible at the same temperature. Vapor pressure is the amount or the measure of the tendency of a material to change into a gaseous state. So those are just two terms that may be foreign to some people. I'm just highlighting the definitions. All right, so following with the information, the instruments are generally known as hygrometers. An accurate type is a psychrometer consisting of two similar thermometers. The bulb of one thermometer is kept wet and the other dry. The differences between the temperatures they record are, are related to the amount of moisture in the air. And that's how the psychrometer works. And then to the right, we see an image of the psychrometer and we also see an image of a regular hygrometer. And we also see the difference in how they look, but they still have the same purpose, which is to tell the humidity of the environment. Now I know we're all looking at this big image to the left and we're wondering, what is this? What is this image? All right, so let me explain. The ceiling or base height of cloud layers can be measured by an automatic ceilometer. And what we're seeing on the left is a ceilometer. I'm not sure how the directions will be on your screen, but looking at it right now, it is the left. All right, so how does it work? It shines a beam of pulse light, often a laser, up at the base of clouds, which reflects the light. The ceilometer has a photoelectric telescope to detect this reflection. The ceilometer can measure in the daytime or at night. And now we have a did you know. So did you know that green clouds often mean a tornado is coming? And I know Jamaicans are watching this and saying, why is this in the slide? But maybe you'll travel and you'll probably see a green cloud and you'll take that as a sign that a tornado is coming. All right, so it's just a fun fact, guys. All right, so on to the next. Finally, we are talking now about rainfall, which is one of the most common elements. It is measured using a rain gauge or rain gauge. It's a very simple instrument that tells very important and delicate information. So as we can see, it is an open-mounted open -mounted container that catches the rain. A commonly used variation of this is the tipping bucket rain gauge, which automatically empties itself as the rain is measured. And on the screen, we see an image of a rain gauge. And this is a tipping bucket rain gauge, I believe. So we can just look right there. The diagrams are there for visual purposes and it's to help with the description. So we now have our fun fact. So it says rain occurs on other planets in our solar system, but it is different to the rain we experience here on Earth. For example, rain on Venus is made of sulfuric acid and due to the intense heat, it evaporates before it even reaches the surface. This is so interesting. Some of these fun facts I didn't know myself and it's really good to share and for us to know these things. All right, so this is my final weather, weather element and instrument. So I'm not going to end the video. I would like to thank you guys for watching. Remember, stay educated in this quarantine time. And there's a tip that's on the screen. It says to like, share, and subscribe. Please do follow that tip, guys. Thanks again for watching.